What is the definition of masculinity? The definition of masculinity is the male who takes initiative regularly and he initiates something that's good for others at a cost to himself, at a sacrifice to himself, and sustains what he has initiated with power and love as a positive leader, as a protector, defender, lover, and a wise counselor. Now, I know practically all the men here, I've already talked to them, have this to a very high degree. <laughs> we all say, guys, when I talk to them, oh, they're thinking, am I like that one? Well, well, that's, that's too high, that's too high. This is something that you grow into. You grow into it, and I'll tell you later how you grow into it. Active initiative and care for the external world, wife, children, we build things like fire departments to protect, theology departments, police departments. We build and protect. That's our orientation. That has to be formed because we have original sin and we have some psychological dysfunction due to our families of origin. But the fundamental initiative uh, of men is the characteristic of their masculinity. Women are actively receptive, not passive. See, passive like just walking around with this microphone, just pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down, is a, is a defect of woman due to her self-esteem and so forth. I'll get into that later. Active receptivity on the highest possible level is Our Lady. When the Holy Spirit says, we're going to impregnate you, she goes, yes, absolutely. Actively receive it. Bring it in. I'll take care of it. And I'll take it, I'll, whatever, you, whatever we got to do, we can do it. Active receptivity. The opposite of active receptivity is passivity. Just move me around. You know, you can do anything you want. Women with low self-esteem get attracted to guys who are very, very bad for them. I have it all the time in my office. You know, good women, good Catholic women. You know, I so say, why do you stay with it? Well, you know, I mean, you know, it's better than nothing. And he's got a good side. No, he's a serial killer, but he's got a good side. <laughs> See, you, 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 he's got a good sign. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I'm not going to go into them now. Okay, there's a lot of reasons for that. And people who work with women, like the Sisters of Life, have this all the time. Why are you staying with this man? He beats you. He verbally abuses you. And you're pretty and you're intelligent and you're young. And it's nothing to do with logic. It's way down deep in here. Okay. But active receptivity and initiative. Now, Dr. Eric Erickson, he made this study at Harvard, and a psychiatrist buddy of mine replicated it not too long ago. He gave blocks to girls and blocks to boys all over the country. He says to the kids, make an exciting scene. What did the boys do? They built towers, well, big towers. And then when they build them really up time, then they knock them down. <laughs> and the girls would go, that's weird, man. What are you doing that for? You just built that nice thing. Okay. Okay, these are little kids all over the country. This is pre-socialization. Well, it's just socialization. No, it's not socialization. They do the same thing when they raise kids exactly the same in the kibbutz villages and same clothes, same toys, and the boys at 18 months, two years, picked up the sticks, put them together, did sword fighting, and chased the girls. Here we go, girls, come on. <laughs> and the girls in the village go, ooh. Okay. So they said, forget the experiment. This is hardwired in the brain. And it's good. It's not bad. It has to be formed. So the guys built streets. And down the streets, cars. And the boys were not talking, except, can I have a block over there, Bobby? Yeah, put the block up, silently put the thing up. Boom, boom. A little cop on the corner, watch out. Okay, be careful now. Okay, channel the energy, channel the energy. Okay. The girls? No. All over the country. Circles. Boxes. Little houses. With people inside talking, sometimes two, three weeks at a time. <laughs> Okay, 
The girls weren't silent in the decks, okay? They were all talking, and what are they doing? What are they talking about? They're talking about. And what is she doing? She's playing piano, yeah, okay. And, and what are they talking about? Oh, everything, they're talking about everything. <laughs> Little kids. And the boys were looking at the girls, why are you talking? Why don't you just build, build something with it? What are they talking about? Now we know about hormones, we know about brain. It always makes me laugh when people who don't know this stuff try, in the church and outside, to try to make guys feel and think and talk like females. Be sensitive now, John. Are you listening to her? Listen and feel deeply. What are you feeling? Are you feeling? So the guy has to lie and say, yeah, I'm feeling a lot, man. I, I just feel like kind of gray. I don't know. <laughs> I forced the guy into a cortisol attack. A man could actually have a heart attack if he tries to talk like a female. You can, we can actually, the cortisol, which is a stress hormone, comes up. Masculine men don't do that, who love you. Jesus didn't do that. Masculine men listen. They don't, not capable of emoting every two seconds about what they're feeling. They don't even know what we're feeling sometimes. My wife says, how do you feel? I says, absolutely. <laughs> now, the women were interpersonal and interior. They brought boxes in there, they put things in. They had an opening to the houses where maybe a lion would run in and they would all laugh, ooh, lion's coming. You know, all kinds of exciting little things. Exciting for them is interior intimacy. For guys, it's exterior activity, doing, with and doing for. For women, it's being with. Being with. Hi, John, you want to cuddle on the couch? For about a couple of hours, maybe. Hug and kiss. Now, if he's looking at his watch, he's thinking, let's see, do I get the cookie if I, if I do this here? Do I get rewarded in any way? So we think transactionally. Okay. We would rather do something for you if we love you, with you. Let's walk but you would like to hug and kiss and cuddle. And that's good, that has to be negotiated. That's not bad. That's a negotiated intimacy. In male-female relationships, there's a negotiation between separateness, which is the male variable, because of our testosterone is very high. We want to do, get up, uh, think, move, and women want to be with, intimately communicate. I can get into that in a few minutes. So these two modalities, hierarchy is a male variable. There's a hierarchy in a trinity, it's a loving communion, the most loving community, but there's a Papa, a Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's a hierarchy. The church that Jesus created is a loving hierarchy. And it has its problems, not because it's a hierarchy. Let's get rid of the hierarchy. Let's all just be together. And let's all just talk and be cooperative. See, it, it, Jesus didn't want that. They got popes and cardinals, and they said, what do you got this stuff for? You don't need this stuff for. So Satan hates hierarchy because it's, it's God the Father, God the Son, and he hates the hierarchy of the church. That's why he's always going after the magisterium. Because he himself is a rebel. He wants consensus. Come on, let's all just hang out. Now, let's look at the neurology of the brain. Guys think, we think with the, primarily with the right side of our brain. Now, that means we're into abstractions, ideas, essences, principles, laws, the external, what can we do out there? How can we put out the fire? How can we educate and teach uh, theology? How can we create something so that a structure that people can develop, women can develop, men can develop. So we're thinking that way primarily with our brain. Our brain is oriented that way. And then we're hyper-focused. Hyper-focused. Which means that if a man is at work, he's at work. And all his psychic energy 
and his testosterone is focusing on this thing here. 